I, I will say this, um, and I'll tell the flipping story straight from Dee's mouth here in a minute, but I'll tell the, um, the, uh, the impact that the guy has had, there's no measuring. Mm. Because like you, like you brought up, when you bring up Ray Scott, and I echo with none of us have jobs, most likely if Ray Scott doesn't make this an industry, and I guarantee you there is, I don't care where they live, there is a flipping stick in everybody's boat that goes bass fishing. And in your career, you've, yeah, you might have 12 now or 15. You've probably owned 75 100. of them, yeah. 100 of them over your career. Sure. And um, uh, it, there's just, there's no telling how big that influence is. And I look at it now, he was fishing at a time when the endorsement thing wasn't what it, what it is now. Um, you know, the guys that put a... The guys that put a, uh, a name on something that they've helped develop and are able to make some of their living from it, yep. it just wasn't something D did. It wasn't something he was concerned about. His living was mm-hmm. very Puritan, yep. going to get it done. But uh, Well, let's, let, let's dive into flipping okay. because when he started it, it was crazy. It was like, I mean, he was using 14-foot flipping sticks. So here's the story. The tournament organizers organizers wanted him involved. Fourteen feet. That's well, crazy. And, and if his he, he was Popeye. Is that right? And and what it was was it was it was Thule different. Right. So and they, Thule's for those of us not on the West Coast, they're reeds. Reeds, right. That's what it, most of us call them. Like you go you go into Florida or someplace around there, and you got a flat reed that sticks up. Yep. The Thule's are hollow and they're round. Okay. Um, but what D would do is he'd be out there in his boat. And he'd tie the line. It was it was it was like cane pole fishing, but heavier duty. And he would they would tape or tie the line all the way around the rod, and and he would go out and over top of the tulies, top of the tulies with a twelve to fourteen foot rod. And he'd get bites, and he would jerk them up and over the top of the tulies and bring them into the boat and catch them by hand. Well, the <laughs> the tournament organiz, organizers wanted him in there because he's the the name, yeah. but he wasn't. Mm-hmm. He mainly fished for striper and then would go play with the bass. But everybody started complaining about if they brought him in, what a competitive advantage he would have. So the tournament organizers first looked at him and said, how short of a rod can you do what you do minimum? And he said, I'll go figure it out. So he took a bunch of saltwater rods and went and played and came up with the pendulum motion where you put the rod on the reel, yep. the reel on the rod, you pull some line out, the double haul technique. And he came back and said eight foot. He said, okay, that's the maximum length rod that we can have in our tournaments. That's how the eight foot rule came into play was because of wow. D. Thomas. Wow, another D. Thomas. Um, and he figured out how to present the lure by the yep. pendulum, yep. The double haul and, and flipping that way and just won everything. Um, and it was uh, Dave Myers at... Fenwick that heard about it and came to him and started talking to him about it and came up with the way to build the rod for him, telescoping to fit in the short rod lockers of the day. That's right. Yeah. And all the flipping sticks were like that. Yes. They, they'd telescope. The, the first portion of the rod would be like three or four feet and they would telescope right at the the base of the real handle. Bash you, folks. Information is pouring over. If you want to learn more about every lake, how to fish, shallow, deep, in between, skipping docks and rocks and cranking, slow wiggling, chatter smattering, you get it at Bash U. Get on Bash U TV, check it out. Sign up. Be a member. Be part of it, folks. Keep learning. 